question is, why design inclusively? Um, I work at the Helen Hamlin Center for Design uh, at the Royal College of Art, um, which I joined in 2000. And I run a program called the Challenge Workshops, uh, which is quite international in scope. Um, I've worked with uh, in 20 cities in 12 countries. And um, I wanted to explain exactly what it does. Um, it has two very, very simple aims. The first is to show how disability is a really powerful tool that allows designers to innovate and design well. It is not the negative thing that people tend to think it is. The second thing is that um, how inclusive design as a process can be a very powerful transformative tool in intractable situations. Um, for the past five years, I've been working in three countries of the former Yugoslavia, uh, which is, is still feeling the impact of the Bosnian War, which ended in 1995, where there was large-scale ethnic cleansing and where communities were very divided. Um, on the left, you see the graveyards of Sarajevo. On the right, you see a vocational school in Macedonia. I've been working in Macedonia, Sarajevo, and in Croatia, so I'll explain that project later. Um, design in these situations can be a fabulous, neutral tool to rebuild cultural networks which have been completely fractured, particularly when design is used to um, work with socially marginalized groups like disabled people. <clears throat> so what is inclusive design? It's very simple. It places people at the heart of the design process. It understands that we are diverse and different. These feet belong to my family members. As you can see, we have different feet. The same parents, but different feet. We even have different colors of nail varnish. So we're all different. Um, it also works, inclusive design is centered, although it works within age and disability, it is not based on the medical model of design. It's based on the social model of design. Um, uh, one week ago, exactly, I took this picture um, in Tel Aviv, in Israel, where I was running a workshop um, based on uh, the extended body. Uh, this is Danielle. Uh, she's a student. She has a neurological condition, which means that her foot drops. She cannot keep it in this position. So the aim of the workshop was to design shoes or a shoe system which would work not only for Danielle, but for everybody. This is what the designers came up with in three days. They came up with the idea for a customizable shoe system in which a f the foot is laser scanned, the design is customized, it is then on a 3D printer, it is fabricated, and it's then assembled. And as a system, it will work fantastically. It will lower the cost of orthoses, but it will also allow everybody to design and fabricate their own shoes. This is what we did. Um, so inclusive design also, it's about a process. The process is the most important thing. It's about sharing skills. Um, in this slide taken in Zagreb in Croatia, you see a, the blonde designer on the left who knows n doesn't know how to make because design educations often forget to teach students how to make. On the right, you see a deaf welder. They are exchanging skills. He's teaching her how to weld. She's teaching her, him the principles of design. So inclusive design is founded in collaboration. Um, I personally believe that um, in the, if you, for the extreme scenario is incredibly important. If you understand extreme scenarios, you can innovate for mainstream uh, uh, situations, as you've seen in the shoe uh, thing. Um, and it's something which is bound out by 
design history. All of you today will have used a keypad, okay? But I'm sure many of you don't know the origin of the keypad, which was, of course, the typewriter. Now, the first typewriter was built in 1808 by an Italian inventor called Pellegrino Turi. He built it for his blind lover, the Contes, Contessa Fantoni, to allow them to exchange love letters. That's how the typewriter came into being. He also invented carbon paper. So even the typewriter, it comes from the extreme scenario of disability. This one, the Palmio chair by Alva Alto, this he designed for a sanatorium, and the chair, the back of the chair, the angle, is um, at a specific angle to allow people who are sitting for long periods to breathe more e easily. It's a design classic, but it's also a functional classic too. It comes from an extreme scenario. And the toilet that you've probably used today too, the history of the washlet toilet is that it came into Japan in 1971 as a medical import, and now two-thirds of all toilets in Japan are this type. So why is disability so important to a designer? I think it does several things. It enables designers to ask questions they cannot ask themselves. It takes a first principle approach. It inspires new avenues of exploration and it gets the ergonomics right. Let me show you. This is a project we did to redesign the Band-Aid. On the top, you see Peter, who is blind. So Peter can tell us about how to interface with something we cannot see. On the bottom left, we have Colette. Colette has severe rheumatoid arthritis. She tells us about how you do things when you have limited dexterity. But Tom, on the right, asks a really interesting question. Tom has no arms. So his question is, how can you put on a Band-Aid when you have no arms? And that's a really interesting design question because it forces you back to a first principle position. This is what they did. They eliminated the secondary packaging. They refolded refolded the, um, the plaster, and they made it so that it could actually be accessed with one hand, like this and that. And that's the way we need to do it too, because when you cut your finger, you are operating with one hand. Um, so why is inclusive design important for us all? Well, we're all, we will all get old. Um, some of us already are. And when we get old, we will all be in denial. And being old is a particularly difficult thing for designers, who, which is a very young possession, uh, profession. Here are two. Um, so one of our uh, research associates came up with the concept of the yo-yo. And the yo-yo is a really useful concept because what it does is it expresses the duality we all have. This is Mick Jagger and Madonna. Their physical age is, Mick Jagger is, I think, 70-something. Uh, Madonna is 50-something, despite surgery. Okay? So physically, they are of that age. Physically, I am 66. But mentally, I am a different age. Sometimes I'm 18. Sometimes I'm 40. Sometimes, we're all the same. Up here, and what our bodies tell us are two different things. So yo-yo means somebody who is young and old at the same time, okay? So how many of you are yo-yos? I'm sure most of you are. Um, so the realities of aging are that as we age, we gain disability. I, now I'm 60, I need three times as much light in order to see as you do. I presume you're in your 20s, okay? Um, and in, in design terms, it's really problematic because uh, this, I think, I love this quote, a young man will never buy an old man's car 
and neither will an old man buy an old man's car. We don't want this when we grow old. We want this. So the big challenge for inclusive design is to bring together function and aesthetics. Um, so this is why inclusive design is important in creative and business terms. This, for example, this is Tom that you saw with the Band-Aid. And this is how he listens to music. He has no arms, but this is how he listens through his Oakley sunglasses. So it's about function, desirability, and innovation. Um, I think the second point, which is about the process, inclusive design understands how design can exclude. Here's a photograph I took in Dublin, which expresses two types of ex exclusion. The young woman of restricted growth is trying to access the ATM. She can't reach the keypad. That's physical exclusion, and it's service exclusion. The woman on the left is a Roma woman who is begging. That expresses cultural and linguistic exclusion. Here's another one, very problematic, digital exclusion, which many of you, probably the younger people, cannot imagine, but many the UK government, for example, is now trying to shift all services online. But of the 63 million people population of the UK, 11 million do not own a computer, do, have ac do not have access to the internet, have never used a computer. So 11 me million people will be digitally excluded. Here's another one which you can see just down the road in Wayno Park on Tuesday and Thursday. Homeless people who are both emotionally and economically excluded. So the point about exclusion is if you understand why people are excluded, you can then design better to eliminate that form of exclusion. Um, and most of all, it understands that Design can empower. And this is where I'm going to talk about the projects that I've been doing in the former Yugoslavia. They were the subject of an exhibition in London in January of this year. Um, this is part of it. Um, but I want to show you just two of the workshops we, we did. Um, this was a workshop at this place, um, a vocational school for deaf students in Skopje. In the time of the former Yugoslavia, it had 400 students, now it has 40. And its, pr its whole purpose is to train students to work when they leave the school. This is what the workshop looked like. So as you can see, how can you train anyone when we have a workshop like that? Um, so we put together uh, uh, three teams of designers Macedonian designers, and I brought UK designers from the UK to lead the teams. Um, it was a co-design process. So here you see the students and the teachers of the school. These are all designers. Um, we looked for, it was clear that you couldn't design and make anything when you had no tools. So the obvious thing was to make tools as products. So we found plans online. We had carpenters on the team. Um, the students learnt through doing. And these were the tools that they made. They also made a workbench. This was done in five days. Okay? But the purpose was, with these tools, they could graduate and start their own business. They could also sell the tools as products to generate income. Um, and then, of course, we created uh, color-coded manuals. The second team was uh, centered on felt. Macedonia has a lot of felt. They make a lot of felt because there are a lot of sheep. But it's used quite crudely and in not a very interesting way. So we wanted to find a way in which felt could be used in a much more interesting way and exciting way that would, gener that would make stuff that they could actually sell. So again, here's the team, designers. These are two felt, um, uh, felt craftspeople. And the rest, these are the students from the school, these three. 
and the rest are designers. So, felt is hard warming, hard wearing, warm and friendly, thick or thin, and it's very colorful. It's also high value. If you sell it in Japan, if you sell it in the UK, it's very high value. It's individual, it's a range of skills, it's fun to make and fun to use. So, I asked the team to create different levels of difficulty so that as they made, they could learn. Okay? So the first level was using industrial felt. Template was made, and this could then be applied to different uh, accessories. The second technical level was lampshades. And again, we had to learn how to use the felt. So felt is made, it's made with lots of soap and lots of water and a sushi mat. So you see, it's rolled like sushi, or sashimi. And this is what the... So this is felt in a completely different configuration. And we gave them sexy titles for the products. And then the, th the second level was the games. Again, we combined the wood, the wood workshop and the felt workshop, so the pieces are wooden, and the felt comes from the felting team. And this is my last slide. It's actually a small movie. I just wanted to show you, I think... So that's, I just wanted to show you that because I think it, it really encapsulates the spirit of inclusive design. Inclusive design is about designing things better, but it's also about engaging in a collaborative process with people from different disciplines, disciplines which are, as we've seen here today in the TED Talk, there are people from all kinds of diff disciplines from whom we can learn. So it's that collaborative process, and it's about social empowerment. So thank you very much. <laughs>